So I know that finding a visual aesthetic for your editing is very hard. It takes ages and a lot of time and experimentation to get good at and refine and on and on and on. But there are some things that are fairly universal that I feel like are mistakes that a lot of beginners or newer photographers make and I wanna help you avoid them. So in this video, I have five mistakes for you and most of them are around doing too much of a thing or too little of a thing. Now, if you wanna get serious about your photo editing and you use Lightroom, then I actually have a Lightroom editing masterclass that I teach that will get you editing your images like a pro and means that you no longer have to watch any other YouTube tutorials like this on Lightroom ever again. So if you are into that, I'll leave a link to that in the description box for you. Okay, the five photo editing mistakes that I see beginner photographers make are number one, too much clarity, number two, oversaturation, number three, too much mid-turn, number four, over-stylized images, and number five, not reframing properly. Let's start with this one because it seems to be all the rage right now. Now, this applies to both negative clarity and positive clarity. And look, I get it. Negative clarity is nice. It can add a touch of nostalgia and dreaminess and even out the blemishes in skin in portrait and on and on. You know, there are mist filters you can use to get that look straight out of camera as well. And I get it. You know, I was using these techniques way back in 2016 before it became trendy to do so. But when your image looks like you shot it through a tub of Vaseline, you've gone too far. You know, when you're shooting areas in high contrast and your contrast areas start to get halation around them, you've gone too far. When your scene looks like it belongs in a hidden mist village in an anime, you've gone too far. You know, on the opposite side, too much positive clarity can be a problem too. And sure, a little bit of positive clarity can be nice to bring out a little bit of the texture to an image, but because clarity works on the midtones, too much of this can make your images become aged and weathered for pretty much no reason. Oh, and don't get me started on using positive clarity on portraits. That looks absolutely terrible. And I don't even want to show you an example of that because I wouldn't want to do that to a photo of any of the models that I've personally shot, that's for sure. You know, the skin starts to look textured and grainy and it's just really not pleasing or appealing at all. In either cases, positive or negative, depending on what the genre of photography it is that you're shooting, I would say that if you're in you know, positive or negative 20, either direction of clarity, then you're in the realm where you should really be paying attention to the details of how your clarity is turning out and what it's doing to your image. Now, I think in the case of negative clarity, the look you're actually trying to go for is something similar to what's called the Orton effect which is something that you can do in Photoshop and Luminar Neo, but you can't do in Lightroom. Now the Orton effect is vastly different in technique and look to negative clarity. So take a look at that if you are interested. Now number two is oversaturation. And this one is pretty self-explanatory and it's very easy to go overboard on the saturation, right? And you know, images that have too much of it appear to be unrealistic to what actually exists in the world. But I understand the allure, you know, generally speaking as a visual pattern, images or parts of an image that have higher levels of saturation draw more attention to themselves. But when everything in your image is screaming for attention, it just becomes a mess of color vomit. And in my opinion, what you should be aiming for is replicating saturation levels that are quite true to life first and foremost. And then if you want your image to have just a little bit more impact, then perhaps maybe dialing the saturation up just by a few digits. And I mean no more than 10, but more realistically like plus three globally. You know, anything more than that is going to look like the photographer doesn't have restraint and you don't want that. Now, it also helps to calibrate your monitor that you're using to edit, and then previewing your final edits on something like your phone as well. And there's a whole bunch we can talk about here in terms of you know, color space and color profile and all that kind of stuff in a future video, so leave me a comment below if you want to hear about that. But trying to align your editing monitor with your final device or platform is a great idea so that you can 
ensure that you can keep a consistent saturation level throughout your editing process. Okay, if you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button for me so that I know it's good enough to make even more free videos just like this one in the future. Now, contrast is one of the most important concepts in photography. Photography is all about light, but light is shaped by the absence of it. You know, and it is this interplay between the brightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image that make your tones dynamic. And without this interplay, nothing stands out. You know, our eyes are always drawn to the brightest parts of the image first, but the darker parts of the image also give us visual cues as to what's important in the image and the level of hierarchy and importance those elements have. And I've seen a lot of images from beginner photographers who bring down the highlights way too far and bring up their shadows way too much so that there's less overall contrast in the entire image. And this almost looks like those old school HDR attempts, you know, before companies got actual HDR right. And you know, it's one thing to preserve your details, but it's a whole other thing to mush your tones together. You know, a good tell for this is in your histogram. If the majority of your tones lie in the middle of the graph, then chances are you've got an overly heavy mid-tone image. And sometimes that could be what you want, but more often times than not, you want an image that has a little bit more of a flatter distribution. In my opinion, what you should do is preserve your highlights, keep them bright, but thinking about letting the shadows fall where they may. Reframing your tonal contrast in this way means that you can have the best of both worlds. You can keep the detail, but you can also have enough contrast for a striking image. Now the key to editing, in my opinion, is to not stray too far from natural. You want refined and considered and intentional stylization. Enough so that it's different from everyone else, but not too different that it ventures into cheesy or too overdone or over stylized territory, and not too little that it doesn't look like you edited your image at all. That is equally just as bad. Now, of course, everyone's limit for this is going to be different, and no one person is going to agree with another, especially if they're in different stages of their photography. But I think one of the main things here is to develop a sense of good taste. And I mean good taste in terms of having a good taste for visual aesthetics. You know, finding an idea of what thoughtful stylization looks like. This means consuming the works of hundreds and hundreds of other photographers and getting a good understanding of how far people push their edits on average. This also means that you need to shoot hundreds of thousands of images to know what situations will look like when you shoot raw so that you can see for yourself the difference between someone's editing and what you can envision their raws to look like. But you can only develop this taste after years and years and hundreds of thousands of examples to then form a decent enough average. In the meantime, you can just pick a few of your favorite photographers and take a guess at how far they push their images and then average it out from there until you can find your own footing. But in general, this is just something to be aware of and keep in your back pocket to work on over time, especially if you're in your first few years of photography. Most beginners in their first few years will go through cycles of over styling and then reeling it back in and then under styling and then repeating it over and over and over again and until many, many years later, eventually settling on a particular level. So it's a journey, but the awareness is the first step. Now, the last one here is a minor one, but perhaps one that goes unnoticed most of the time, and that's not utilizing the power of your crops properly. Now, if you're shooting on a dedicated camera, or even if you're shooting on a smartphone, you know, you've got enough megapixels to crop in the frame and reposition elements within it. So do it. Now sure, you might be cropping for 4x5 for Instagram, for example, or something like that, and that's all well and good, but make sure that when you're cropping, also position the elements around your composition so that it better fits the layout and the structure of that current image. Now I did a video about composition and layout in my visual pattern series playlist, so check out the full video if you're interested in that. Now, oftentimes it just takes a few seconds to stop and reconsider your framing for an image. And especially if you've got enough megapixels, taking the time to just move your elements around just a little bit can take 
a good photo and turn it into a great one. Okay, that's it. I hope I brought some awareness to some of the mistakes that I see beginner photographers make all the time when it comes to editing and I hope this was useful. Again, if you want to truly master photo editing in Lightroom, then check out my Lightroom Editing Masterclass. But otherwise, if you want to keep on this YouTube tutorial train, then you can check out my full editing workflow from start to finish in this video over here. Okay, I'll see you in the next video, but until then get out there and make something that matters. Peace.